Hello everyone, uh, this is Athir Mahsin speaking, a lecture of uh, poetry in the third class, uh, University of Basra, College of Arts, Departments of English for the year uh, 2019s and 2020s. Uh, the, um, the lecture is going to be about uh, William Blake, the third pillar of Romantic uh, era. In fact, uh, William Blake, he lives into two uh, periods of uh, literature. Uh, the first one is the, uh, um, uh, the uh, transitional period that preceded or the uh, preceded Romanticism, which is called the pre-Romantic uh, period, as well as the Romantic periods of literature. Uh, the lecture includes two, two parts. The first part, uh, William Blake's uh, Life and Works, and the second part, is William Blake's London the most famous poems written by uh, Blake. Starting by the first division of this lecture, William Blake's life and works. William Blake was born in London on November uh, 28, 1757. He attended uh, a drowning school for four years uh, and in 1772 began uh, a seven year apprenticeship to uh, James Bazier's uh, engraver. At the age of 22, uh, Blake became um, a student of uh, the Royal Academy. He was uh, a vehement supporter of the French Revolution and attended um, uh, radical gathering. In, 17, uh, in 1782, uh, Blake married uh, Catherine Poacher. In 1800, he moved to uh, Philipham uh, near uh, Chichester at the uh, innovations of uh, William Haley. Uh, in 1804, he was uh, tried for uh, seditions and uh, he uh, tried for seditions and was uh, uh, acquitted. In 1809, he had his uh, one and only exhibitions of 16 paintings. On August uh, 12, 1827, William Blake uh, died and passed away. Uh, in fact, uh, William Blake uh, or the uh, works of William Blake uh, have been gained a recognition definitely after his death. Uh, in 1784, Blake composed his unfinished manuscript, An Island in the Moon. After 1788, he published several collections of poems. Here is the uh, here is no natural religion and or among them here is uh, no natural uh, religion and all religions are one. He wrote poems and printed the songs of experiences in 1789. In 1790s 30s, uh, 30s, he wrote visions of the daughters of uh, Alipun. In uh, 1790, the marriage of heaven and hell. In 1793, Blake issued a, uh, a prospectus to uh, prospectus and to the uh, prospectus to the public. In 1794, uh, the Songs of Innocence was published again, together with the. Uh, the songs of experience. In uh, 1804, uh, Blake started the Iki both Milton's and Jerusalem. In fact, or as a reality, uh, Blake's poetry has generally been divided into two uh, groups. The first a group lyrical poems, poetical uh, sketches 17, uh, 1783, the uh, songs of innocence uh, 
1789 the songs of experience 1794 uh, a prophetic or the second division of the second group uh, prophetic books contain uh, Tyrell in 1789, the Book of Thale in 1789, Milton in 1808, Jerusalem in 1818, and uh, the Ghost of Abel in 1822. Starting by the uh, second part of this lecture, uh, which is specified for the famous poem uh, written by William Blake, it is London. Uh, starting by an introduction to the poem, uh, the poem or uh, Blake often referred to as a social commentator. Uh, a large number of uh, Blake's poems focus on similar themes that were relevant to the society in which he was writing, such as poems on industrialization, child labor, and the more general notions of man versus nature and the individual against society, and etc. etc. London is no exception to this. Acting as a social commentator on Blake's time. At first, Blake loved London. He wrote that. Golden London and her silver Thames, uh, thronged with shining spires and uh, corded ships. This is from the poetical sketches. But after the French Revolution, the British government began to oppress uh, the civil uh, democratic activities. Then London was quite different from before. Everything was covered with darkness, terror, and miseries. In this poem, Blake draws from his personal observations and gives a comprehensive picture of the uh, many miseries, physical and spiritual, in the English capital London. He paints a picture of directly or uh, sorry, uh, the uh, dirty, miserable streets of London and describes the wretched people at the bottom of the society, the chimney sweepers, soldiers, and harlots. The entire poem centers on the uh, wails of these uh, people from their pain and the injustice done to them and exposes the gap between those in power and in misery of poor people. The poem is representative of English economics uh, problems of the time, uh, condemning many powerful institutions such as the church, royalty, uh, the new industries and the military. The main object and theme of this poem is man's lack of freedom and the uh, causes of this lack. It is a relatively unique poem in that it takes such a negative and critical view of London, when at the time the city uh, represented the uh, pinnacle of technology and was considered the uh, center of Western culture and uh, B British Empire. This is, in short, a very uh, short introduction to the poem. The, uh, the poem London is divided into four uh, quadrants or four parts, four stanzas as well. Uh, I wander, uh, I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and marks in every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe, in every a cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every band, the mind forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening charge abals, 
and the hapless soldier's sigh runs and bloods down palace's walls but most uh, through midnight streets i hear how the youthful harlots curse a uh, blasts the newborn infant's tear and a uh, blights with a uh, blakes the marriage hears Starting with the poem by a short critical summary. Uh, this poem, or the poem London, was written during the time of a French Revolution and shows the poet's views of 18th century London, a place where he lived nearly all his life. A Blake was considered an eccentric and a madman, and in his lifetime, uh, in his lifetime, and it was only after his death that his uh, works uh, gain recognition. He had lived most of life in poverty and was buried in an unmarked grave in uh, Benhill Fields in London. So starting by the short summary for each stanza of the poem. Stanza first, I wander through each chartered street near where the chartered Thames does flow and marks in every face I meet marks of weakness marks of woe. The poem has a total of 16 lines which are split into four uh, paragraphs, four stanzas or four quatrains uh, with a rhyming ABAB. A, B, A, B button throughout the poem. In the first paragraph, uh, it is with a sarcasm that Blake describes the sight he sees as he walks through the streets of uh, London. The repetitive use of the word chartered stresses Blake's anger, as, uh, anger at the political times and his feelings toward the ruling classes with their uh, controlling laws and oppressive ways. He taunts the poem or in the poem uh, to say uh, that it is uh, not only every street they wants to control but even the river Thames uh, which should normally be free uh, for all but in this case it is too or it is too chartered thus the poem focuses on the social and political background of London and highlights uh, differences in the wealth of the ruling classes and the poverty facing the common man a free speech is uh, curtailed to avoid Londoners following the example of their French counterparts. The people of London are described as being weak and full of woe as the marks on their faces reveals. Uh, there is a repetition on the word marks which again stresses the despair and tiredness uh, that they seem to be going through uh, because of their oppressive ways of life. Uh, being a mystical person himself, uh, Blake uses the expression marks of woe in an almost religious sense. He is being the uh, onlooker in this poem and as he uh, walks past he can see the weakness and misery marked on the faces of the buzzer uh, due to their helplessness at uh, not being able to bring about any changes in their destiny. In the second stanza, in every cry of every man, in every infancy cry of fear, in every voice, in every band, the, man, the minds forge manacles I hear. Though the feelings of every man and child are suppressed, it is uh, as if 
the fear and their cries are audible to him as he walks by. Again, uh, his mystical side can be seen because throughout his lifetime he was said to have spiritual visions. Uh, through their silence, he can still hear all that they want to say about can note because of fear of authority. Uh, there is a lack of free expressions and he uses the word ban uh, which is quite clear um, in its meaning and reveals how people were unable to voice their uh, criticisms on how the country was being ruled. Um, no one dared to speak out for fear of being imprisoned. The words fear, cry, ban, and uh, mind forge manacle describe a people who are suffering and frightened uh, and their feelings are imprisoned in their own minds. There is a repetition of uh, words like every uh, on the first three verses to stress these feelings of being imprisoned and trapped. And the third uh, a quatrain, uh, how the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church abals, and the hapless soldier sigh, runs and blood down palace's walls. In the third paragraph, he talks about the chimney sweepers and the hapless uh, soldiers, and in his finger of a blame points to palaces of authority like the church and the palace or uh, places of authority like the church and the palace. The word appals, sights and uh, run in blood show authority being immune to its common people who are in distress but there seems to be no comfort coming their way. The chimney sweeper represents the destitute children while the soldiers represent uh, the anguish of those who had to serve in the army under difficult conditions. Their blood is being split down the uh, palace's walls while the cries of the suffering children are a blackening the church which should bring light to its people. The combination of helpless on one side and the unhearing authority on the other uh, is both stark and exultatory in its tone. And the final uh, verse of the poem, but most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlots curse a blasts the newborn infant's tear and blights with blagues the marriage hairs. And this final quartan Blakes takes on an even more forbidding tones as he talks about the uh, young girl who is out in the darkness of the night walking the streets. Uh, young women had to res uh, resort to a prostitution because of poverty and he can hear her cur curses for what she has to be but through. Her grief affects the newborn child and he uses powerful words like blasters, which is uh, a contrast to the gentleness uh, one would use for a newborn child. Uh, it is uh, as if he uh, can uh, foresee the difficulties that child will have to suffer just like his mother is doing. In contrast, a rich woman getting married in uh, a carriage will be uh, bl uh, blighted by uh, this curse and uh, her carriage might turn out to be a hearse. Uh, Blake is pointing a finger at the rich 
men who might use the service of a prostitute and then get married and pass on disease to their wives. He uses the word plagues to signify uh, the goings on of the rich and how their, act uh, their actions affect the lives of all innocent people involved. This poems, no matter how uh, brutal and harsh uh, and its message has relevance even in modern times where there is poverty due to large income uh, discrepancies between rich and poor. Technically speaking, the poem or the poet uses different kinds of technical features in this poem, like images, capitalizations, choice of words, language, uh, rhyme and rhythm, repetition, um, and different uh, ways and uh, specification in this very short poem that is so much uh, representative of everything in life. So, uh, focusing on the technical features in this poem, uh, starting with the first one, which is the use of images. Images in the poem, uh, for instance, if we are going to uh, deal with the poem from the beginning, in the first, uh, or the first image in the first stanza, represented by these words, the minds forge manacles I hear. The key image in this poem is the mind forged manacles, uh, attitudes with, uh, which takes away our freedom of thoughts and action. Uh, three powerful examples of those who are not free, or three encounters who have weaknesses and woe are the chimney sweeper, the soldier, and the harlot. The first uh, the first image, uh, the uh, the mind forged manacle of the second stanza, is the key image and the central metaphor of this poem. Blake imagines the mind as a forge where manacles are made. Manacles and shackles for the legs would be seen on uh, convicts perhaps passing along the streets on their ways to prisons or uh, commonly in London and Blake's time on their way to ships for uh, transportation to Australia or different parts of the world. For Blake and his readers, the image is very striking and horrible. The image is also uh, an allusion to an even more famous statement. In 1762, some 30 years before Blake wrote London, the Swiss philosopher Jean Jacques Rousseau wrote uh, in the social contract, man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Blake agrees with Rousseau that man's lack of freedom, his manacles are uh, mind forged. They come from the ideas and outlook Im uh, imposed on us by external, uh, external authority. Mind forged manacles lie at the uh, heart of the poem. The example of the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, example of the mind forged manacles start with the chimney sweeper or sweepers. Uh, as the church building is uh, literally a blackening with the smoke from the chimneys. So the church as an organization which should help the poor is blackened metaphorically with shame at its failure to give that help to poor people and children. The church should be about by the a cry of the chimney sweeper. In the same folds of images used in the poem London by William Blake, uh, the second image is the hapless soldier. The poem was written 
shortly after the start of the French Revolution. The uprising was so bloody that the figure of a speech called high purple was often used as blood was said to be the running uh, or uh, to be running down the walls a blake shows how the unhappiness of the english soldiers could if it uh, of uh, if its causes were ignored lead to similar blood uh, blood shed here The third part of the uh, first technical uh, feature is the images could be seen in the uh, last stanza. Uh, the last image, the harlot, uh, the, the harlot uh, is the most shocking to Blake as well as to us as reader. The harlot is the truth behind respectable ideas of marriage. A new birth is not a happy event, but only uh, to continue the cycle of misery. And the wedding carriage is seen as a hearse, leading to a kind of death. The word ablakes uh, here suggests the um, sexually transmitted diseases, which the youthful harlot would contact uh, or sorry contract and pass on to other giving her cursing words real destructive power the second uh, points of the technical features in uh, by William A. Blake is the use of capitalization for instance in stanza 2 Capitalization is used extensively throughout the poem uh, to infer something beyond the simple meaning of the words. It usually means something deeper. For instance, uh, the capitalization of man in the second stanza, in every cry of every man. Uh, this capitalization suggests that the whole of urbanized society has gone to the state of moral de uh, decay and misery. Uh, every infant, uh, infant cry, the capital letter shows that there is something beyond just children, that the persona meets also innocence, which is being corrupted by fear instead of child uh, idealistically being given security or uh, a, a heaven here they have to fear and be afraid uh, capitalization is also used in uh, the word chimney sweeper uh, or chimney sweepers they cry church soldier uh, palaces harlots and uh, marriage uh, this is definitely uh, starting from stanza uh, three, how the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church abals, and the hapless soldiers sigh, runs uh, runs in blood down palaces walls. Usually, these kinds of words that have been capitalized to represent an idea beyond just the word or an institution which be uh, or which will be uh, a criticized for instance um, um, for instance man uh, refers to urbanized uh, society uh, um, we have the um, chimney sweeper uh, it refers to the child laborers who uh, works um, in a very tough and hard conditions uh, the um, the church is a representation of the religious institution that fails to help the poor people and the uh, and the society of london during the times of william blake the word soldiers uh, it is a kind of image for the soldiers who are suffering during the times of the um, uh, of 
uh, writing the poem of London as well as the word palace uh, is a representation of the uh, royal family and the institution of ruling class uh, capitalization is used a lot and represent the institution and is accompanied by the reason why Blake is satirizing these institutions the third part of the uh, technical features in the poem uh, which is the choice of words uh, in each stanza the poets uh, make use of a specific words to uh, show his anger and uh, resentments uh, from the um, uh, from the situation that is going on uh, in the times of writing this poem uh, the careful choice of some words also enhance the theme of this poem uh, so we are going to uh, examine some examples of the words that have been specifically and carefully chose by William Blake uh, for instance in the first stanza I wander through each chartered street near where the chartered Thames does flow and marks mark in every face I meet marks of weakness marks of woe the use of the word chartered in the first line is rich in imagery it introduces imagery of mankind in bondage showing that oppression not freedom or individuality is the condition of the London that Blake uh, writes about Chartered also means uh, heard out or leased and shows that the city is in the hands of the merchants and even the street and the river Thames is being controlled for a profit. The use of the word face and the first stanza uh, dehumanize the words uh, the persona is not seeing marks of weakness or woe in a human person just a blank face the poet chooses the word face instead of person to show the loose and the sorrow of the people while in stanza 3 uh, uh, the uh, the word uh, blackening uh, in the second line every blackening charge of balls is an easy and uh, common word but in this poem the poets wonderfully chooses this word which literally means a blackening with the smoke but metaphorically means a blackening with shame at its failure to give that help at the same time this word contrast with abals which means make bail uh, such a simple word conveys so much information uh, so we have to admire the poet's techniques in choosing the words uh, and the same uh, parts of the choice of words in stanza 4 the poet definitely in the second line chooses the word harlot how the youthful harlot uh, cares uh, harlot is a biblical word and is stronger than prostitute by using this word the poet expresses his deep worry and strong condemnation of the society and thus or therefore the last stanza is the most powerful part of the poem the unfortunate women are forced to be harlot just according to their curses we can see everything covered uh, with darkness so the wedding becomes a funeral her uh, marriage hers is an uh, apparent uh, contradiction and is a figure of speech known 
as uh, oxymoron. Uh, it is used uh, satirically to compare the wedding to a funeral and foretell that kinds of a future England must be faced uh, with the with if things go like this. The fourth division of the technical uh, features in London, the poem of William Blake, is the most significant feature that is so much uh, interesting and captures the attentions of the reader, which is repetitions. And repetitions started from the beginning in the first line in the first stanza. In this poem, Blake uses many powerful devices to enhance the expressions of the theme, one of which is the use of the uh, of repetition for special purposes. For for instance, in, in the first stanza, I wander through each chartered street near uh, where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of woe. Uh, in the first stanza, there is something awkward in the repetition of the word mark. The first mark is a verb. The second and last are nouns. So, there were two complex effects to observe marks, but he marks or marks a Blake reinforced the effect to being dragged into an um, uh, imprisoned world where nothing reveals from the faces he meets but weakness and woe. Well, in the second stanza, uh, the repetition is still going on. In every a cry of every man, in every infancy cry of fear, in every voice, in every band. So the word in every uh, had been repeated many times or three or two or four times. Uh, in the second stanza, the poets even use every four uh, five times, more than four, more than three, uh, showing that no one can escape from the miserable and uh, a tragic reality that is there are the mind forged manacles everywhere the repetition of a cry a cry of every man infant uh, a cry of fear the chimney sweepers a cry and even the hapless soldier side emphasizes how the people in london suffer at that time We are moving to the fifth part of the technical features in London. Uh, it is ma magical and it's a uh, marvelous rhyme and rhythm. This poem is famous for a highly strong musical pattern. Generally speaking, the rhyme and rhythm is very definite and structured. The rhyme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. And this poem is written with a metrical pattern of iambic tetrameter, which blended with sometimes a trochaic uh, tetrameter, which can help to uh, accentuate the line uh, with seven syllables and uh, the first word citrus. The changes are acquired by the special purposes. This means the emphasis of the meaning. The alteration of the citruses on the syllables in each line makes the poem sounds like striking of the uh, uh, anvil and also helps the poems to be uh, more powerful, more strong. So, one of the most striking characteristics of this poem is the anvil music. In addition to the technical features mentions, uh, mentions uh, above, uh, London begins with the, verb, uh, with the verb set in the present tense. This implies uh, that the poem concerns timeless realities 
unbounded by references to any uh, particular incidents. The use of uh, a person in this poem who clearly has uh, first-hand knowledge of London's conditions uh, lends credibility to the poem, making it more personal and uh, emotive. Not so much far away from the technical features in the poem is the language used by Blake in his poem London. So the tone of the poem is at uh, the is at times uh, or is at time by Pellicle reflecting Blake's uh, strong interest in religion. It is as if he uh, as if the uh, speaker is offering a prophecy of the terrible consequences and less changes are met in the city. Thus, in the first stanza, Blake uses repetition twice, first using the word chartered. Uh, this is a reference to the charter that allocate ownership and right to uh, rights to a specific people many including many including blakes so this uh, so this as a robing ordinary uh, people of their rights and the freedom the second use of repetition is with the words marx in the first stanza this has a dual meaning it refers to the physical marks carried by people as a result of the conditions they endure and is also suggestive of the uh, speaker record uh, the speaker uh, recording evidence during his walk through uh, the city streets and the first three lines of uh, uh, stanza 2 the speaker uh, makes a clear that every sound he hears is evidence of the mind's forged manacles. Manacles are like handcuffs. The speaker is suggesting that people's minds are restricted and confined, that the city has robbed them of the ability to think. The poem is full of uh, negative words like weakness, uh, woe, a cry, fear, appals, blood, blights, blagues, and hairs are just some of them. Uh, the poem ends with a startling contrast in the language choosing. Uh, definitely marriage hairs. To Blake, marriage should be a celebration of love and the beginning of a new life. Yet, here, it is combined with the words hairs, a vehicle associated with a funeral. To the speaker of the poem, the future brings nothing but death and decay. The last, the last part of this uh, lecture is going to be about the a critical overview of uh, William Blake's London. William Blake, who lived in the uh, in the later half of the 18th century. Uh, and the early part of the 19th century uh, was a poet, a philosopher, a radical, an artist and a great thinker who was able to uh, bring about rem uh, remarkable results with the simplest of means. In all of his work, uh, he wrote his poems with deep personal emotions but if we look further and ignore the uh, prophetic qualities we discover a further intended meanings of a strong political and social level. He was a critic of his own era, but his poetry also uh, uh, strikes uh, a chord in ours. Um, Blake was uh, one of several poets of the time who uh, restored emotion and feelings into poetry uh, and thus 
was one of the first romantics. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Blake lived during a period of intense social uh, changes, the Industrial Revolution, the French Revolution, and the American Revolution. All happens during his lifetime. Uh, Blake was uh, witness to the uh, transformation of agriculture society to uh, from uh, agri agriculture society to an industrial society, which is where uh, the basis for some of the uh, of his poems uh, stands. As an example, or uh, a best example, or a good example, we may look towards William Blake's London from his Songs of Experience. Here Blake comments on uh, a city he both loves and hates. It shows his disapproval of changes which occurred in his times. Um, uh, the poet describes the woes that the industrial revolution and the uh, breakings of the common man's ties to the land result in. Uh, therefore, he uses many methods to gain the perfect description of how he saw industrial London, but the most outstanding method is his use of imagery. His first use of imagery is the first and the second lines of the first stanza. He uses the word chartered street and chartered Thames. A charter is a legal document which uh, or a legal works which gives a legal power to the council of a town or city which allows them to be able to create their own laws within the boundaries of that place. The imagery suggests that not only do the streets of London have to follow the rules, uh, but that the river Thames has to be regulated as well. Uh, the low marks have tamed and controlled a free uh, flowing river. This use of imagery emphasizes that everything in the city, including natural forces, are enslaved by the city. And the next uh, line, max of weakness, max of woe. Uh, there could be uh, a play on word. Mark means both to see, to note, or to note. But then again, there could be another meaning, like a physical mark upon someone's face, uh, like a sign of a grief. Uh, grief or misery. Uh, the use of uh, the word mark um, may be uh, as deliberately repeated to sound like the blows of uh, a hammer. Um, Blake uses this imagery to emphasize uh, uh, to emphasize the uh, emphasize the pain which industrial London is reinforced on uh, reinforcing on the uh, on the poor uh, physically and mentally uh, not far away from the imagery is the use of the mind forge manacle in line 8 is used to describe why the people are so unhappy this is because they are not free as the, their lives are being controlled by oppressive or restrictive ideas within their own minds and created by the minds of others. Also, by using the manacles, the word sounds heavy, um, just like uh, their plight or their problem. Uh, blackening church abals is a vivid and uh, a clear image. The church could be a blackened literal, literally because of the soot from London's uh, chimneys, or it could be because the sun uh, is setting and uh, the outline of the church can be seen in the fading light. Blake's use of a blackening could be symbolic or it has 
uh, a symbolic meaning. The church should be a source of moral warmth and light, as seen as cold and dark. There could be another meaning to the word abals, like uh, a pall over uh, a coffin. So it is used to emphasize that the church ignores what it doesn't want to see. Another shocking or surprising uh, image uh, is runs and blood. This is where the wounded soldier blood is running down the walls of the rulers for which he has, uh, he has been fighting. So it emphasize, uh, emphasizes the fact that the poor were being blocked out by the governments with no means to live and many to die. The Youthful Harlot's Curse is a contradicting image which makes you think or makes students think how could a harlot be youthful. It shows that even children were subjected to the crimes of London. The curse could be seen in two ways or in two, two ways. It could be that she is literally swearing, uh, swearing but it could uh, also mean that the unhappy girl is cursing or blaming uh, the hard cold world she is living in. The most powerful use, uh, use of imagery in this uh, poem uh, is the oxymoron blight with sight the merge hers. An image in which opposite col uh, collide with one another, a hearse, a vehicle for carrying the dead to the grave being used to marriage. Sights are also more likely to be heard at funerals than marriages. But here Blake mixes the two together. At one level it could be uh, that Blake is arguing that it is wrong for uh, prostitution to exit in the same society or to exit in the society uh, to be found in the same society as uh, a respectable legal marriage at another it could be that he is suggesting that men do go to prostitutes where marriage is cold and unloving or were sexually oppressed Yet at another level, a black can be mean diseased, and in the 18th century, uh, diseased were common and could be fatal. The hearse could be a real one. In whatever context it was written, it is a part, uh, in particular, a strong line which symbolizes. Uh, or which symbolizes the death or uh, wrongdoing in the uh, or industrial uh, London. Uh, Blake uh, uses much uh, imagery of darkened things to stress how a bleak and a gloomy life is, with no light at the end of the tunnel. The rhythm of the poem is very sh very slow and bounding, uh, which emphasizes the darkness of London and the uh, pace of London at the time. The punctuation in the poem increases the slowness, which enhances the effect of being trapped in a world there uh, and there being no way to escape. The rhythm scheme is constants throughout the poem, which adds uh, to the constants bounding, which is also achieved through a Blake's use of iambic uh, pentameter uh, and uh, uh, his use of repetition of words every in, in the second stanza seems to stress the bounding of the uh, poem uh, further. A Blake's use of imagery repetition, punctuation, and rhythm all work together to uh, produce a powerful work of art 
um, in the eyes or in the minds of reader. It shows how times really were in London and how it was impossible to break out of the manacles which society had set for the poor. Thus, London and, uh, and many of Blake's other works uh, with a similar theme, in particular those of songs of experience, strike a particular nerve uh, for those who are living in a society where uh, the cost of living compared with, uh, with the income is steadily increasing where disease are or disease are becoming increasingly common and where the public is becoming increasingly disillusioned about the uh, real uh, the, uh, the 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 reliability and the uh, trustworthiness of the politicians poems uh, like uh, poems like london are those which can still be applied to cities today which seems to be uh, rapidly uh, desynthesizing uh, itself to the max of weakness, max of woe, which we are well accustomed to see uh, or to see uh, on the faces of bus buyer of today. And thank you for listening, for taking your time.